Hey everybody, it is Jason here from Quick, and I'm so excited to be doing a little bit of a special Quick Gains this week. So one of the things that we've been talking about as we go into 2021 is highlighting some of the cool and unique use cases that we see being used within Quick uh, every single day. And we want to highlight those, but also give you guys kind of a look at how other creators around the world are using Quick to solve their needs, to scale up their video content, to make their content searchable, but also to caption that content and make sure that it's heard uh, on all the platforms that are on mute. So today I'm going to replicate some of the applications that we've been seeing and give you guys an on-hands display of how we use Quick, uh, how I use it personally, and how I show things off. If I'm, if I'm sharing a demo with a prospective client, uh, or if I'm going through a process to highlight clips that I think are interesting just for my own sake. So as we go into this, um, be ready to learn some of the tips and tricks that I use. Uh, I'll, I'll try and walk through every part, part of the process so that it feels like a full comprehensive dive into what we're doing. So if you have any questions, be sure to ask as we go through this live workshop. Uh, and before we get started, I wanna make sure that uh, we have an opportunity to talk about what's changing in product as we go into 2021. So part of my role and responsibility as a co-founder and head of product here at Quick is making sure that we have all of the best features and components that make your life easier as a video creator and editor. So what that looks like for us in 2021, um, there's a few big changes that we're adding into our uploading process for Quick, uh, and this will really help you select more files all at once. Um, so you don't have to do a one at a time file upload. So we're calling this our multi-file upload update, and that's something we're actively testing right now. It should be live here in the next uh, week or so. And what you're gonna see with that is the ability to drag and drop more files into that upload, uh, that upload page, and then see the status of each one of those files as they upload. So this is really useful if you have an archived library of content that you wanna bring over and make searchable with our new search feature. So if you haven't checked that out, if you haven't explored what search looks like, um, make sure that you dive into that. We'll cover a little bit of that in today's kind of walkthrough. Um, but search is really powerful for making your content uh, easily accessible to people who maybe have never seen that content before. Maybe people are trying to discover moments or clips to repurpose and add to a content calendar. So it's a great use for um, teams and groups of people who are engaging all with kind of that core library of content. The other thing that we're doing with multi-file upload uh, is we've mapped out a way to try and make sure that wherever your video exists online, uh, we can make that accessible. Uh, we can include that into uh, the quick video library as easily and as seamlessly as possible. Uh, and one of those big areas is YouTube. And so making sure that we have a YouTube integration uh, connected where it's as easy as grabbing a YouTube link uh, of yours that you can drop into uh, that upload page and then we can grab that video, bring it over into your library and you can repurpose uh, the content from there. So you don't have to download from YouTube or find that file or folder that you use to uh, store all of your YouTube content on your local devices. Uh, we're also adding about 20 new languages uh, into the mix. So this is something that we're really excited to offer. Um, it includes a lot of different language profiles for English accents, which is great. Um, so if you speak English, but you have an accent that has been a little bit more difficult for quick to accurately transcribe, uh, don't worry, we're, we're adding some more support for that, uh, as well as including um, other international languages. And so for a full list of those, we'll be announcing that with our product update uh, through our newsletter, as well as through Intercom, which is the little button at the bottom of the website uh, where you can chat with us. So be sure to keep an eye out for that next time you log on uh, into Quick. Uh, the other thing that we're adding is file renaming. So one of the things that we know, for those of you who are hyper-organized um, and like to keep things clean and well, um, well descriptive within your own process workflows, is being able to rename files after you've uploaded them and kind of move them around within your video library according to 
um, you know, what they're named or, or making sure that their naming conventions match up with your entire team process. Uh, so we've added support for uh, renaming files and that can be done within your video management library as well. Uh, so that will be coming live with this new update, uh, which is just around the corner. So again, uh, when that update is live, you will see an announcement within your quick account uh, as soon as you log in. And then following all of that, uh, we've got some really exciting things coming here in Q1, uh, revolving around more searchability options. So being able to filter, being able to do more fuzzy searching. Um, there's things that will make that search experience more magical and more robust, uh, but give you the content that you're looking for and the content that is meaningful long term. So as we continue to work on our algorithm, algorithms to make that more efficient, uh, you'll be seeing updates along with that. So that's what's new on the product roadmap. I'm very excited. We've got an incredible development team here uh, that's putting in a lot of hard work to make that uh, fast and efficient. Um, and we have a lot of fun little pet names for all of these internal projects um, that I'm sure we will um, we'll have some Easter eggs along the way. So if you catch any of those, let me know. That'd be fun for us to see. So today I want to highlight a specific type of use case uh, that we've seen um, kind of come up more and more with Quick, which is this idea of leveraging content um, that is more long form, that's coming into a video library that needs to be distributed rapidly um, and also clipped up in many different ways or many different segments. And one of the industries that's most fascinating about that has been sports, so traditional sports media, whether that's highlight clips coming out of games, whether that's uh, a game analysis that's being done either by um, game day commentators or even if it's you know a coach going through uh, a game film and talking about some of the things that are applicable to you know the up, upcoming game coming on Friday night. Uh, so there's some really interesting use cases, and I pulled a few of examples. Um, that we can dive into online just for demo purposes to understand where some great applications would be in terms of chopping up some of these long form pieces of content uh, and distributing them. So there's a few use cases we'll dive into here. Uh, the first one is going to be talking about, you know, if you're interviewing players, if you are uh, running a sports show, if you're running a, a, a sports brand online, and you'd need to fill up a, a Twitter feed or uh, an Instagram feed or LinkedIn feed full of content. How do you go in after a 40, 50 minute interview and capture the moments that are best? And we actually had a, um, uh, a, a Zoom call with one of our dear friends uh, here in uh, the, the quick space, which is uh, Dr. I. And uh, she she did something on this uh, on this Zoom call that we had with her that just kind of opened the eyes to how people record uh, long form video content and make notes for later, which was just a simple pen and paper writing down keywords or ideas uh, that were really valuable uh, to her from that presentation, from that actual uh, keynote or long form uh, long form piece of video. And so when you write down these keywords, all of a sudden it gives you things that you can go back and search on. So uh, we're going to dive in. I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to go through a couple of uh, a couple of videos um, and search for specific keywords to see if we can't find um, the core messages, the core pieces that are super valuable uh, that we could share out, we could clip up uh, and, and repurpose this content. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're going to dive into our quick account here. Okay, so this is my quick account. And um, what, we, what we've done is we've, we've got a few videos here. And, and so this is just a, a demo account that I have specifically for this sports use case. And I've got a few examples. Uh, one is uh, NBA Draft Day, which is still transcribing uh, I uploaded this right before the stream, so it's been transcribing for a couple of minutes. Now it's a six hour long piece of content. Uh, so that's something that uh, we could go through and we could um, chop up into multiple different pieces. Um, but I think one of the one of the primary use cases that we have is 
if, if there's a sports show that is aired every day or every other day or every week, how do we how do we dive into the memorable moments when, especially if it's a daily show, you need to have content out this afternoon. You can't wait till tomorrow because then it's new content. So the first use case I want to look at is Pat McAfee, uh, as he has a couple of videos here, uh, as well as uh, Trent Dilfer. Um, because in in one of these use cases, we're going to see how searching across multiple different um, users' uploads uh, can be really valuable. So if you are a marketer, if you're a brand representing multiple shows, multiple podcasts, you can actually search for the same terminology across uh, a set of videos. Or if you have your own pieces of content, you just have your own show that you're running, uh, you can search for things a little bit more specifically. So the first use case I want to do is I want to search for something that in both Pat and Trent's uh, videos would be fairly common for us to uh, expect, which is just the word touchdown. Uh, we're going through American football for those of you who um, are across the pond or overseas. Um, so as we search for touchdown, you can see I've searched through all of this content uh, very fast. And we have a few different clips and a few different videos here. So the first thing I'm looking at is these three clips. Uh, and I know they're all from the same video. Uh, we give the title here, but you can see that um, by this little uh, carrot at the bottom, which if we click it, will collapse that group. So we can say, okay, there's this one video that has those three results. So I can open that back up if I need to go to a specific time in the video. Uh, or I can close that down just to have a little bit more clear view of the different videos I'm looking through. Um, again, we've got three more examples uh, from this different video. So this one was um, Pat and Aaron Rogers talking about Hail Marys. And then the next one is um, Pat crowning Aaron Rogers. Uh, so we might uh, collapse that one. Um, and then we have another one here at the bottom, which is Trent Dilfer talking and reacting to the Packers. Uh, so there's different videos here. We can see that there's clips within these videos that we could go to different points because the word touchdown might have set, been said multiple times within the video. So as we go through this, I want to make sure that we grab uh, a moment that is uh, really good. So let's just go through and see what some of these are. Uh, we can see a we can see a preview. Um, so this one uh, that Trent's talking about, the touchdown was called back. That might be an interesting clip. So let's go in um, and have a look at what uh, was said around that keyword, um, and then we can find kind of this clip, this moment that would be really valuable to share uh, on on social. Okay, so when we open this up, we're taken to the clipping editor within Quick, and this is where we can. I'll just mute this so you don't have to hear the audio. Uh, this is where we can play back the video. So it jumps us kind of right to this point where uh, we, we've searched for a keyword. So the touchdown was called back, kind of highlights out right out of the gate. It starts you there. Now, that being said, we'll, we'll load part of the video on either side of this keyword. Um, so we can scroll back and we can see, um, you know, maybe, maybe if we wanted to start at, um, let's see, where does this start? Okay, so um, here we go. So by the way, Joe Burley, okay, so this is probably a good place to start uh, the clip. So I'm just going to click on this slash. And these slashes just mean there's a break between the captions being previewed or shown on the page. So this would be a good example because we want to trim off a little bit of this, um, a little bit of this clip with the word roll on it. Um, I'll show you how to do that. But then we can go all the way through this thought. Um, let's go to all the way to, and that's what showed yesterday. Okay, so we can use a shortcut. We can expand this, uh, this clip area up here if we, we want. Um, so there's a, there's a good way to do that. Or or if we want to strictly just go off of the text, so we're just using the transcript, the shortcut here is, and you saw that I clicked on the slash at the beginning, that's at the start of my clip. I can shift click 
where I want the end to be. And that will automatically adjust this timeline bar to include all of the content to that point. So here we're going to have a 43 second clip. Um, and let's just call it a uh, touchdown call back because that's really the keyword and the main focus that we want to find here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this clip. And as we clip out this piece of content, um, it's going to go into our video management page and it's going under a, a new area that we've created called clips. And so if you've used search, you've already seen this, you've seen where um, we separate the clips from the original videos that you upload. So if we go back to videos, uh, you know, we can see that we have the, um, the, the main set of videos that we've uploaded here. Um, if you want to go to clips, uh, you can see I've already created a clip on this account. Um, just to make sure that uh, uh, make sure that I could find some of the tangible moments um, easily. But uh, but the videos component and the clips component, they're separated by these two tabs. So you can just jump back and forth here. So as we're clipping out this touchdown call back, maybe I want to look for another one. So going back through these videos, um, you say, OK, this one's clipping out. We're going to be able to edit that, add a, add a caption to it quickly um, here in a couple of minutes. But I want to go and search for something different. So maybe we've used a, a clip from Trance. Maybe we want to grab one from Pat McAfee's uh, library. So um, one of the things I know Pat says sometimes is uh, Rowdy. Uh, let's just search Rowdy and see what comes up. All right. OK, so yeah, let's dive into this one. Um, and this, this is a really interesting element that I've seen affect my own videos. Uh, and as creators are changing the way that they record content, knowing that they can search through things. So it actually expands your vocabulary a little bit. And you might drop new words or different words. Um, one of the things that is fairly common as, as we're closing out a quick game show and we have a guest uh, is to ask for parting words of wisdom. And parting words of wisdom isn't something that you would normally say uh, in the middle of a show, or maybe it's not a, a normal thing that you would say kind of throughout a longer piece of content. And so we can actually jump to all of those moments for all of our guests very rapidly uh, when we're clipping out our own content. And uh, similarly, if you're using interesting or different words within a longer form piece of content, uh, we can we can go straight to that. So um, if if Pat's talking and uh, using the word rowdy specifically, uh, that's a that's kind of a different word. It's not as common, uh, and so we can search for that. So let's uh, let's go in here. This is Pat and uh, Aaron Rodgers, and uh, as we look at this. We can look at, uh, okay, Pittsburgh was always rowdy. Enjoy the fans. So he's asking, he's asking about this, you know, kind of the environment. Let's go from, all right, I love Baltimore. Let's start here. And we will go through. There we go. Okay, so we'll grab this clip and we'll call this Rowdy. All right, so as you can see, since we've done that through once already, it gets faster. Um, you know what you're looking for. You can scan through the transcript. And guys, by the way, these are raw transcripts uh, from our automatic transcription service. They're not fully corrected yet. Um, that's something that we found is really valuable when you're searching through content. Um, because our accuracy is so high out of the gate, you can actually get close to where you're uh, looking for in a piece of content. And then you can just correct the transcript on the clips that you use, which is so fast uh, for your workflow. Uh, but it also allows you to focus on those moments that you're going to be using. Now, in all use cases, that's not the best way to treat uh, your content. Um, many people are actually transcribing their entire piece of content. Um, and making sure that all of those words are corrected and reviewed because that makes search that much more accurate. So the larger your library gets, the more valuable having a 100% accurate uh, human reviewed, um, 
transcript library is. And so that's where those who are putting in the time and, and automatically transcribing, getting 90% of the way there, uh, and then going in and reviewing and making edits and saving those edits, uh, that's where those libraries become very valuable over time because then you can hand that off to another team member who can just go and clip something. And with search, if we've already burnt in captions or if we've already corrected a transcript, um, when you go through this burn-in process uh, on a clip, then you don't need to do anything extra. The transcript's already done, it's already changed. So let's go into this touchdown callback video because it's done already. Um, we're gonna go ahead and edit this. Um, and we have a couple of options here. <clears throat> so you can see, since we grabbed the transcript um, from the line by line breakdown of it, we have this extra word at the beginning, uh, which we don't want. Um, and so we're gonna play this through here. So you can see that it's just catching roll off the beginning of that um, of that clip, and then it's jumping into, by the way, Joe. So we're, all we're gonna do is we're gonna remove roll. Um, and that's gonna take that right off the transcript. It's an easy, quick way to uh, adjust that. Now, if we needed to clip out that part of the video a little bit more, we could have adjusted our clip um, clipping tool um, just to shave off a little bit of that. So we could preview that within the clipping tool and make sure that we get exactly what we want. Um, I'm not going to go through and edit uh, this piece of content uh, for you guys on stream. I think you know what that looks like already. Um, but we can go through and we can preview the text here. Uh, we can see how the uh, captions are previewing uh, on the screen and we can adjust those around. So for example, um, for Trent, it looks like he's using a graphic down here. We want to make sure that we adjust those uh, captions up above that. Uh, and maybe we want to match that style uh, to add a little flair to this. So let's go ahead and uh, go through. I will grab font style that I like using. We'll do a full background, which means it'll be that square block background. Uh, we will make it large, um, and he's doing kind of a, a yellow, a darker yellow on that. So we'll do that, and then the text can't be white because it won't look good. We'll pull kind of a darker blue. Now, if you know what your hex code specific uh, colors are, you could add those here. Um, I'm just kind of guessing to make something look on brand. Um, and then we can preview that. Okay, so that's a little big, a little off. Let's go through adjust this. Maybe a little bit more golden. Okay, that's pretty close. Uh, and then pull that down a little bit more. And the text was a little too big for this one, so let's go down to like 14. Okay, uh, so we can see that's pretty close. Could probably do a little bit more work um, if I wanted to adjust those colors right on brand for, for Trent here. Um, now, one of the things that we can do with this background uh, is edit some of the uh, transparency. So if you have that block of text and you want it to be a little bit see-through, uh, there's, some, there's some interesting things you can do. But we can grab this transparency slider uh, and move that down. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and that allows us to, okay, so that's probably a little too far, but you can see we can now see through um, this kind of background text. So since that was too far, let's pull it back up. And that gives us something that doesn't interfere as much with the content in the background, uh, but also gives us the clear branded readable captions uh, straight on the screen. So mute this. And we'll play this through. Um, so you can see these words are, are going to be burnt in right over this piece of content. Um, but there may be a use case where you don't want the words burnt into that video clip, that piece of content. We'll show you what to do um, with, uh, with just grabbing the original file because that's useful sometimes. Okay, so uh, just to make a note here, if I wanted to use this caption position on another one of these videos, so like for example, um, if these graphics are going to stay the same on multiple clips or mul multiple pieces of content, just make a note of the vertical position. In this case, it's 31. And then I'm going to go ahead and burn in these captions. So as we burn in these captions, 
uh, we're gonna go into a finalization stage. Um, for this video, it's 43 seconds long. Our finalization is probably just gonna take a minute and a half or so. Um, so it's not very long, uh, but in that time, let's see if we can go through and, and edit this Rowdy clip. We're gonna do the same thing. Um, we're gonna look for maybe some brand elements and brand colors. Uh, so this one, maybe we'll keep a little bit more neutral. Uh, we're gonna just move this up here. We're gonna go and let's just grab a preset that we've got. Preview that, okay. A little bit big, move it up, change the size. 14, probably too small. Let's try 16. Okay, perfect. Uh, 16 is what we want. Let's increase this background size. Okay. And um, yeah, I think that's good. So for that one, uh, again, we have a, a word here at the beginning. Uh, we're just going to pull that off, um, preview through this. And uh, the only thing that I would need to do is go through and make sure that all of these words are correct. Um, from first glance, looks pretty accurate to me. Um, and just for the sake of time, as we're going through this, I'm going to burn in these captions uh, because our other one is probably close to being done. Uh, and yes, it's already done. It's already finalized. So um, with that, I'm going to grab this video that we had done. Save that. And I'll pull this one up here for us. So you can see this is the, uh, this is the final piece of content that we've created. Um, in just a couple of minutes, we've gone through, we've searched through a long form piece of sports content. We've looked for um, a conversation around a touchdown play and we've clipped that out. So that's pretty exciting, that's cool. Um, and what do we wanna do uh, if we want to grab the original file? Uh, well, we've got a few extra options. We could re-edit this if we wanted to change maybe the location of those uh, captions that are burnt in, or maybe we want to adjust or tweak the settings, or maybe we just found a, a word that uh, we needed to correct or maybe add some punctuation, we can always go in and re-edit that. So that's that's available. We could download the original file if we just wanted that clip with no captions burnt in. So this could be useful if you are sending things around internally within an organization, you don't necessarily need to caption something, uh, or if you know that it's going to be included in some kind of reel or montage uh, that uh, you don't want uh, captions from a bunch of different clips uh, all being different on that montage. So you can grab it and include it as an original file. Uh, you can always download the SRT. This is something we think is valuable even if you're not using the SRT as often since the captions are burnt in, um, but at least it's available to you in that process. So. This is all kind of that whole start to finish process, making sure that we have, um, making sure that we have the video content that we want for the specific use case, but also going through that whole workflow, start to finish has been very quick. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, now, if we go back to this uh, finalization, should almost be done on this rowdy one. In fact, yes, it is. Um, and so we could go ahead and download that one as well, just to make sure that that clipped and burnt in properly. Okay, great. So we've got that right here. Um, and this can highlight if you're looking for uh, specific team names, specific players, um, making sure that you have those uh, corrected within your transcript um, is very important. And it uh, adds a lot of value into that entire library of content. But once you have that, being able to search all of your content by player name, by team name, um, by a specific event that happened within a piece of content, uh, can bring up a lot of really valuable highlights, about valuable clips that you can distribute very quickly uh, in that content workflow for sports. So this has been kind of a start to finish process on what I would do, what how I would approach some of these larger form pieces of content. Um, and it really does start with making sure that you have the videos pulled in, having some easy and quick keywords that you can go and search for. But once you have that, the video post-production part of it is drop dead simple with quick. And that's really what we're shooting for. So with that, um, I think that there's obviously things that we can improve long-term in terms of scaling this out across teams. 
uh, and multiple users. And that's something that I'm very interested in hearing more feedback from you guys um, talking about what does it look like for us to integrate team features uh, that would allow multiple members to either edit content or, or drive more value into that process and that workflow. So whether you're in sports, whether you're in marketing, uh, whether you're in education and you're producing a lot of coursework for students, there's a lot of different use cases that we see on a daily basis. Uh, and all of those have different applications for tools and features that we can include in Quick to make it better and more efficient for your use case. So please let me know. Uh, you can always reach out to me directly here at Quick. It's jt at quick.io is my email. Uh, or you could message me online. I'm on most of the social media platforms. Uh, and I also head up our support team. So if you've got feature requests or ideas and you're in the app, you're working through something and you just want to brain dump it, uh, open up that uh, that little chat uh, bubble in the bottom right hand corner uh, of the app and uh, just let me know. We'll make sure that we get that added into our list of things to explore and vet out. Uh, and in some situations, I'll, I'll reach out to you and ask you more about what that use case looks like. So. We hear all of those product feedback feature requests, and we're really excited to explore what that looks like and, and integrate them at the right time to make sure that your entire workflow uh, is made more efficient. All right, guys, if you've got any more questions, um, please reach out to me. Uh, so excited to walk you through some of the sports use cases today. And if you're in the sports vertical, if you're in the sports industry and you say like, wow, this was a, a game-changing way to clip and add content, uh, into my workflow, uh, reach out, let me know. I'd be happy to walk you through this personally with your own use case uh, and share how we think Quick could make your life a heck of a lot easier in creating content. Until next time, guys, I'm Jason. We we'll look forward to seeing you and seeing what you create. See ya.